everyone, welcome to News at this hour. I'm your host Rika Roy and this is our top story. It's been three days since the BJP's resounding win in the three Hindi heartland states of Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. But still no word on who will be chief minister in these states and a big list of probables thereon. In the latest, BJP chief uh, JP Nadda has met Home Minister Amit Shah. Remember earlier on Wednesday, Nadda had a meeting at PM Modi's residence. There have been various high-level BJP meetings taking place. Home Minister Amit Shah and JP Nadda have also been meeting various leader leaders. Amid this suspense, former Rajasthan CM Vasundara Raje is heading to Delhi and is likely to meet the BJP brass on Thursday. My colleague Maria Shakil joins me on the phone line for more on this story. Maria, what are we hearing? Is Vasundara Raje getting the hot seat in Rajasthan? Well, the answer to that is only with uh, Prime Minister Modi and Home Minister Amit Shah uh, because uh, the party sources are saying that the name of the Chief Minister will be decided by the pa party's parliamentary board, but that will be more of a formula uh, formality. And the BJP Legislature Party meeting will be held soon to, uh, to announce that. But yes, what we can confirm is that Vasundra Raje uh, will be arriving in Delhi sometime in the next couple of hours. She has already taken a flight to Delhi from Jaipur and uh, she is likely to meet the high command tomorrow. Uh, she has been summoned is what we are being told. But all indications so far is that uh, the BJP may well go for a new phase. They are looking at generational shift in all these three states. Uh, because, Rika, the sense certainly within the party is that victory in these states, yes, the local leadership may have played a role, but it was because of collective leadership under Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So the party did not go with picking a place. Up, Maria, are you picking up the fact that there could be a generational change now and BJP wants to bring in younger leaders? Well, we cannot rule that out at the moment. Uh, so a possibility of that is high because today was the day when uh, 12 MPs of the party who actually contested and won in these elections have asked to tender resignation and uh, work, start serving as MLAs in the respective states. So that mm -hmm. is a development that has happened already. Mm -hmm. And now Vasundra Raja being asked to come to Delhi. Mm -hmm. uh, let's not forget in the last uh, few hours what we were also told that, uh, you know, Raman Singh, Vasundar Raji and Shivraj mm -hmm. Singh Chauhan, the three uh, tallest leaders in these in their respective states have already communicated with the party leadership that right. they will go with the central leadership's decision. Right. Uh, though there have been some meetings that have been held mm -hmm. by those who have who were seen as close to Vasundar Raji demanding mm -hmm. that she be made uh, the face in the run-up to 2024 in particular mm -hmm. because there is an important battle coming for the Lok Sabha. But because right. she has been summoned, I it will be anybody's guess to think what will be the next course of action. Absolutely. It's anyone's guess as to what will be the next course of action. Maria, we will wait for you to give us all the news that unfolds on Thursday when Vasundara Raje is in New Delhi. Moving on, Chief Minister of Telangana, Anumula Revant Reddy made it to the top post in the youngest state of the country. He will be sworn in on Thursday at a ceremony that will be attended by the Gandhis. He has given an open invitation to the people of Telangana to attend his swearing in. There is still suspense over how many ministers will be inducted. The last few days have been rather exciting for Telangana watchers. Not just the run-up to the elections, the voting and then the counting and then the drama of the Congress leaders going to Raj Bhavan to say that they would stake claim to form the government even before they had elected a Congress legislature party leader. So the run-up to Revan Reddy taking oath of office as Chief Minister of Telangana has been not without its share of drama and build up of a lot of action as well. So on the evening of Monday itself, it was uh, decided that there would be a swearing in ceremony that would happen and uh, all the chairs were brought in, the mic systems were brought in, the engineering systems, the lights. So there was the lights, the action and the drama before the senior leaders said cut because they said that it's not just Revanth Reddy who needs to be considered for the post of chief minister, they can be considered too. What we understand from Congress sources is that 
Even before the voting had taken place, Rahul Gandhi had himself promised to Revanth Reddy that he would be made Chief Minister when the Congress gets a majority in Telangana. The camaraderie between Rahul Gandhi and Priyanka Gandhi with uh, the Telangana Congress Chief Revanth Reddy was quite obvious uh, uh, even at the last roadshow that they did uh, at uh, Malkajgiri. In fact, they were doing selfies together and uh, the kind of a vibe that they had, it did, did appear that uh, the Gandhi uh, brother and sister, the siblings were quite impressed with his kind of uh, energy, gusto and the confidence that uh, he displayed. Now, two bills, the Jammu and Kashmir Reservation Bill 2023 and Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Bill were passed by the Lok Sabha on Wednesday, a day after they were inducted. Union Home Minister Amit Shah responding to the debate in the lower house said that the two bills will bring justice to those who have been deprived of their rights to the past. Uh, rights uh, in fact in Jammu and Kashmir for the past 70 years. The Home Minister also Mom. raked up Nehru during his speech. The opposition went up in arms and the Congress staged a walkout after he said Jammu and Kashmir had suffered due to two blunders committed by former Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru. Nehru ke samay mein jo blunder hua tha, iske karan Kashmir ko bhugat na pada. Main manewar is sadan mein खड़ा रहकर आपके आसन के सामने जिम्मेदारी के साथ कहता हूं कि दो बड़ी गलतियां जो पंडित जवालाल नेहरू के प्रधानमंत्री काल में हुई उनके लिए गए निर्णयों से हुई इसके कारण सालों तक कश्मीर ने सहन करना पड़ा एक सबसे बड़ी गलती जब हमारी सेना जीत रही थी जीत रही थी पंजाब का एरिया आते ही सीज फायर कर दिया गया और पाक ऑक्यूपाई कश्मीर का जन्म हुआ अगर सीज फायर तीन दिन लेट होता तो पाक ऑक्यूपाई कश्मीर आज भारत का हिस्सा मान्यवर एक ही गलती बताने से इतना तिल मिला गया नहीं मैंने हटा दिया मैं मैं तो सिर्फ नहीं नहीं ऐसा नहीं है मैं सिर्फ दो ही बताना चाहता हूँ एक पूरा कश्मीर जीते बगैर सीज फायर कर लिया और दूसरा यूएन के अंदर हमारे मसले को ले जाने की बहुत बड़ी गलती कर मान्यवर किसी ने किसी ने भी नहीं कहा था कि आर्टिकल 370 जाने के बाद कश्मीर में आतंकवाद समाप्त हो जाएगा आर्टिकल 370 जाने से अलगाववाद में बहुत बड़ी कमी आने वाली है और इसके कारण आतंकवादी भावनाओं में कमी आएगी रिकॉर्ड की बात है भाई उन्नीस से 2004 इसमें शासन पर मैं नहीं जा रहा हूं कालखंड बोल रहा हूं कई शासन आए हैं टोटल आतंकवाद की कुल घटनाएं चालीस हजार एक हुई छोटी छोटी घटनाएं भी है कुछ बड़ी भी है 2004 से 14 मनमोहन सिंह सोनिया जी के शासन का समय आतंकवाद की घटनाएं सात हजार दो सौ सत्रह हुए सेवन थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड सेवेंटी और नरेंद्र मोदी सरकार में चौदह से तेईस तक सिर्फ दो हजार हुई सेवेंटी परसेंट की कमी आई पिछले दिनों तो ही हमने सुप्रीम कोर्ट में सबसे पहले तो हम ही आए और सबसे मतलब बेहतरीन से बेहतरीन वकील नेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस के तरफ से हुए हमारे आने के बाद फिर बाकी उसमें गुल मिल गए बाकी तंजीमों ने भी फिर उसमें अपनी कोशिशें रखी लेकिन शुरुआत तो मसूदी साहब और अकबर लोन साहब ने की और आगे भी सुप्रीम कोर्ट का एक तरफ हमारी सियासी लड़ाई जो है वो चलती रहेगी ब्रेजन शूटिंग ऑफ सुखदेव सिंह गोगा मैडी हैज लेड टू वाइड स्प्रेड प्रोटेस्ट ऑन ग्राउंड विद राजपूत ऑर्गेनाइजेशन कॉलिंग फॉर बंस एंड प्रोटेस्ट थ्रू द स्टेट द राजपूत आर की वोट बैंक फॉर द बीजेपी एंड देर इज नाउ अ चांस दैट द केस मे बी हैंडेड ओवर टू द एन आई ए विद राजपूत लीडर राजेंद्र राठौर राइटिंग अ लेटर टू द गवर्नर डिमांडिंग द सेम After Sukhdev Singh Goga Medi was shot dead in his home in Jaipur by three men who had come to have tea with him, the daylight murder has led to protests and exposed the political fault lines in the state. The BJP is now asking for an NIA probe. ये पूरा मामला मेरी मांग है कि NIA इसकी जांच करें और जो मांग पत्र उन्होंने दिया है 
आज राजधानी सहित सब जगह पर लोग सड़कों पर उतरे हुए हैं उन मांग पत्रों के अनुसार मुआवजा दें नौकरी दें और उसके साथ साथ पूरे मामले को मैं केंद्र सरकार के गृह मंत्री जी को भी पत्र लिखूंगा कि एन इसको टेकअप करे The Rajasthan police meanwhile has identified the two shooters Rohit Rathore and Naveen Fauji who were probably hired killers for the job. सबसे पहले प्रायोरिटी ये कि एक तो जो दो दो शूटर्स है उनको पकड़ना है एंड देन इसके जो जो भी कॉन्स्पिरेसी है जो रीजन से मोटिव है उसको अनरावल करना है और जितने भी लोग इन्वॉल्व हैं उनको अरेस्ट करना है अरेस्ट करके एंड देन इसको केस को फास्ट ट्रैक में ले जाके जल्दी सजा कराना दैट इज द फर्स्ट प्रायोरिटी What could be the motive for Goga Meri's murder? If police sources are to be believed, the Rohit Godara gang that indulges in murders for extortion and land grab appears to have had some kind of rivalry with Goga Meri. There are 30 criminal cases against Sukhdev Singh Goga Meri. These range from murder, extortion, loot, abduction, kidnapping to even the NDPS act. He has cases against him for illegal arms and the last case registered against him was in 2016 for extortion. The brazen shooting of Sukhdev Singh Gogameri leader of a fringe Rajput outfit in Jaipur has brought to the fore the fault lines in the political landscape of Rajasthan with Rajput groups calling for bans and protesting on the streets of the state There's also a larger question about the police's role in this entire case when he asked for protection and was not provided but ironically goga meri himself has a history sheet with several cases of extortion abduction and even murder against him and that could have been one reason why the police did not provide him protection in jaipur with camera person sushil kumar harsha kumari singh ndtv time now for a very tiny break on the show more on the other side stay tuned Welcome back. Now, nine people have died in Chennai and Chengalpattu districts due to electrocution, flooding, and fallen trees caused by the cyclone. The state government is actively working to restore normalcy by draining flood water, providing essential services, and clearing roads. IAF helicopters have been deployed to airdrop food packets in affected areas, and relief efforts are underway. Chennai a submerged city two days after cyclone Mijjom triggered rains flooded the city aerial food drop captures the plight of those marooned in flooded low lying pockets without power for the third day even as the core of the city goes back to normal rescue team on a boat ride into the posh transi colony at low lying velacheri people fleeing on boats to take shelter in their friends or family's homes many wading through waste to neck deep waters villas and apartments flooded vehicles submerged aruna an expecting mother manages to come to safety after a two day wait for a boat nobody is there to help us if if somebody can help they could go get the older people boats are very very small it's not safe so uh, request the government to give some bigger boat so that people out there can come out na bhai dadiya tatha ko take tar karna right government is not arranging any uh, arrangement is very poor right very poor cyclone mijjom mayhem has claimed eight lives so far Authorities say around 400 boats have been deployed to rescue people and that they are attending to SOS calls in a systematic way. They are sure restoration of power in less than 48 hours. A little bit just over 24 hours. Certain areas the water is draining very fast, certain areas where it is not being able to drain our officers are also making assessment and we are going to be informing our feedback to our other uh, departments which will be responsible uh, for helping us drain this area call it impact of climate change or heavy price being paid for encroaching water bodies or collapsing cities infrastructure for many the nightmare continues for the third night in flooded homes without electricity 
bringing back memories of the 2015 floods. But the big question, or any lessons being learned? At Chennai's Tansi Nagar in Velicheri, with Suresh, Sam Daniel, Find the TV. It's also been a very hard time for our crew uh, down there in Chennai, including Sam, who's been getting us all these reports of the flood over the last few days. Now, moving on, even as Zoram People's Movement Party's Chief Minister designate Lal Duhoma on Wednesday staked claims to form the next government after meeting Mizoram Governor Hari Babu. Yes, he has spelt out his first priority after Friday's swearing in is that he is going to uh, meet Union Home Minister Amit Shah and External Affairs Minister S. Jay Shankar to discuss the issues of refugees from Myanmar, Bangladesh and Manipur's displaced people who sheltered in Mizoram. So for around 32,000 people from Myanmar have taken shelter in Mizoram after the military took over uh, the country in February 2021 and over 1,000 people from Chittagong Hill tracts of Bangladesh have also fled to the northeastern state after the ethnic troubles in the hilly areas. Now, I'll have to discuss with the Home Minister. Yeah, yesterday we had a telephonic discussion and uh, within a short time I'll go to Delhi and meet him and discuss about it. They are our own citizens, they are Indian citizens. There can be no differentiation from them. He had conveyed his full cooperation and he also uh, said that he had uh, a, a full confidence on the new government. He himself had treated, he might have seen it. Some international news now. Employees of the Washington Post have put out a video message seeking public support for their 24-hour strike against workplace problems. This comes after talks between the employees' union and the management to negotiate a pay contract uh, uh, fa failed. In fact, uh, um, there was uh, the contract was uh, for remote work and other employment conditions. Uh, hundreds of staff at the Washington Post, one of America's most storied newspapers, will walk off the job for 24 hours on Thursday. My colleague Parmeshwar Baba has this report. Unionized journalists at the Washington Post say they are going to stage a 24-hour strike to protest staff cuts and what they call management's failure to bargain in good faith in contract talks that have stretched on for about 18 months now. This latest labor clash comes a little more than a month after William Lewis, the former publisher of the Wall Street Journal, was named chief executive and publisher of the Post, as the Washington Daily newspaper was projecting a year-end loss of $100 million. The Post, by the way, is one of the many news outlets struggling to devise a sustainable business model in the decades since the Internet abundant the economics of journalism and digital advertising rates plummeted. Executives at The Post, which is owned by billionaire Amazon.com founder Jeff Bezos, said at the time of the Lewis announcement that they were offering voluntary buyouts across the company in a bid to reduce employee headcount by about 10% and shrink the size of the newsroom to about 940 journalists. The Washington Baltimore News Guild, which represents more than a thousand editorial, advertising and other non-news staff at The Post, they said mismanagement by the previous publisher led to nearly 40 layoffs last year, half from the newsroom, and the company was now seeking to cut another 240 jobs through buyouts. Now, while representatives for the newspaper's management did not immediately respond to a request for comment on the labor dispute, according to the union, management has threatened to impose more layoffs if too few staffers accept voluntary severance packages. The Guild, in an online statement, though, argues that this means fewer post employees making the critical journalism that keeps our communities informed and holds public officials accountable. In fact, they assert the company's wage proposals would fail to keep pace with inflation or with the pay of the competitors. In fact, this minute-long video on your screens of theirs ends with the refrain, because we're worth more, worth more than our bosses are offering.